welcome back. Today we're going to be painting a classical Renaissance style painting using techniques prominent in this area. So grab your brushes and let's get started. I've already sketched out the perspective, which is a style used frequently in the Renaissance, especially in paintings like the School of Athens. Perspective gives a painting a three-dimensional look because it adds realism and depth to it. For example, in Da Vinci's The Last Supper, he used perspective to not only create the look of realism, but also to focus on the main subject, which was... Leonardo da Vinci also studied the human anatomy to create a look of realism, like he did in his Vitruvian Man. So originally we were supposed to have a model for this painting, but our nude is clearly physically depressed and does not meet the criteria for the proto-mannerism style that was present in this era. Artists like Michelangelo laid the groundwork for future painters like Goya by using this mannerism to create really bulky and jacked figures. Speaking of Michelangelo, one of his most famous works of art, the Sistine Chapel ceiling, was actually forced upon him by Pope Julius II. So originally, Raphael was supposed to paint the ceiling because he's an actual painter, and Michelangelo was in fact a sculptor, not a painter. So then he got petty and painted a bunch of dogs in the ceiling. Pope Julius II was also known as the Warrior Pope. Uh, during this time period, popes not only served as a religious leader, but they also served as a temporal leader of the papal state. Because of this fact, there was actually a lot of corruption in the Catholic Church, such as the scandal with Alexander VI. Popes during this time were sworn to religious celibacy. However, Pope Alexander VI had several mistresses and therefore several children. One of his children, Cesar Borgia. Cesare. Cesare Borgia. Cesare. Anyway, he tried to give his son political power and territory in the papal states, which was totally not okay. Another technique used during this time was chiaroscuro, which is the contrast between light and dark. Um, one of the most famous artists that used chiaroscuro was Caravaggio, ta-da! Although he was a Baroque artist and not a Renaissance, so he came long after that. This rebirth of classical ideas was sparked after the Black Death, mainly because before they had this obsession with death and after it kind of died down, this uh, recreation of ideas and philosophy that life had to offer became more popular. But there were other reasons for the beginning of the Renaissance. This caused a rise of trade, which nurtured families like the Medici to rise to power, who were a banking family that also controlled trade. Some of their commerce included silk, jewels, and other luxury items. Similar to Petrarch, Lorenzo Valla studied the Latin language and wanted to restore its position over the vernacular. <laughs> he was also famous for exposing hoaxes like the donation of Constantine. Florence is especially central to the rebirth of classical ideas, which coined the term civic humanism. This will describe the strong surge of Florentine Renaissance ideas. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had just as much fun as I did painting. Um, join me next time. We're going to be painting really obese cats. It's going to be wild. Because of man, Vitruvian. Vitruvian. Vitruvian man? Vitruvian. Vitruvian man. Vitruvian. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's not funny. And several legimates. 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 Scene 11, part 2, take 5 or 4, I don't know. Part 2, take 1. He did in his Vitruvian man. Scene three, part two, take two. I don't even know what I'm saying. What? <laughs> Michelangelo, one of his most famous weeks, week, his most famous piece of, pe I can't talk. Famous piece of art, works of art, works of okay, art. Okay, cut.